In the year 2077, across the United States, television and radio broadcasts ominously reveal that the president has vanished and a nuclear attack is imminent. Amidst the chaos, a festive gathering unfolds, where the host decisively shuts off all electronics, urging guests to revel in the moment. A charismatic Cooper captivates the children in the garden with his thrilling cowboy performance. As his act concludes, Cooper's joy turns to terror when he witnesses a nuclear explosion devastating the city. The explosive blast sends a shockwave that shatters the tranquility of the party, causing windows to break and inciting a frenzied panic among the guests. While some scramble to their cars in a desperate escape, the hosts violently secure their bunker, forcefully excluding intruders. Amidst the commotion, Cooper flees on horseback with his daughter, glimpsing further destruction on the horizon. Fast forward 219 years, a select group of humanity survives in subterranean sanctuaries called vaults, as the world above has turned perilously inhospitable. In Vault 33, the resourceful Lucy leverages her diverse skills, from pipe fitting to science and from teaching to athletics, to support her community. Ambitious and hopeful, Lucy secures permission from the Vault Council to engage in a significant trade event with neighboring Vault 32, a venture she hopes might also lead her to find a husband. Supported by her family, who adorn her beautifully and throw a celebratory send-off, Lucy meets the timid, endearing Monty from Vault 32. The exchange is seamless, and as Monty integrates into Vault 33, the community rejoices with a festive marriage ceremony. But as the celebration distracts the masses, Monty and Lucy slip away to begin their new life together. Meanwhile, Lucy's brother Norman stumbles upon desolate scenes and sinister secrets in Vault 32, including the grim discovery of the overseer's murder. The plot thickens when Lucy is startled by distant gunshots and cries. Armed with her trusty Pip-Boy, she uncovers the chilling truth, Monty and his kin are surface-dwelling raiders who cunningly infiltrate the vaults. After laying waste to Vault 32, they masqueraded as residents to penetrate Vault 33. A violent confrontation erupts between Lucy and Monty, climaxing in a deadly struggle for survival as Monty's betrayal turns physical. In a desperate fight, Lucy battles for control of a knife wielded by Monty, who gains the upper hand and stabs her, setting the stage for a dramatic saga of survival and deception. Amid the chaos, an alarm suddenly blares, momentarily distracting Monty. Seizing the opportunity, Lucy swiftly knocks him unconscious with a heavy blender. With her attacker down, she injects herself with a medical aid and exits her room, only to be met with a horrifying scene, many of her loved ones lie dead, victims of the ongoing raid. Grieving yet resolute, Lucy arms herself and steps into the fray, eliminating a raider as she ventures into the melee. The celebratory air has now transformed into a brutal war zone, where the residents valiantly clash with the invaders, both sides suffering devastating losses. Amid the turmoil, Lucy maneuvers skillfully, taking down raiders with precise shots. In a harrowing moment, her brother Norman nearly falls victim to an attack, but Lucy intervenes just in time, saving him and urging him to find cover. The conflict intensifies when Monty reappears, intent on finishing what he started. Just as he lunges at Lucy, her father, Hank, intervenes with a powerful blow, knocking Monty off balance. Hank doesn't stop there, he continues his assault, ultimately subduing Monty by drowning him in a barrel of pickles. After the grim encounter, Hank and Lucy rush to a corridor linking the vaults, only to find the raiders holding several hostages. The raider leader, Moldaver, presents Hank with a cruel choice, Lucy or the hostages. In a heart-wrenching decision, Hank chooses Lucy, securing her in a closet before the raiders incapacitate him with tranquilizers. As they depart, Moldaver chillingly remarks on Lucy's resemblance to her mother, then disappears with Hank and the others to the surface, warning the hostages to flee before setting off an explosive. In the aftermath, the survivors mourn and clear the debris, repurposing the fallen as compost in a grim testament to their reality. Despite her injury, Lucy staples her wounds shut and attends a community assembly, determined to organize a search party for her father. Yet, facing unanimous refusal due to the dangers above, she is undeterred. Sensing his sister's resolve, Norman secretly persuades Chet, the gatekeeper, to let her out. As Chet offers to accompany her, Lucy tranquilizes him, bidding farewell to Norman, and steps into the daylight for the first time. Overwhelmed by the harsh sunlight and the desolate remnants of civilization, she is confronted by the vast, relentless ocean and the omnipresent echoes of loss. 
Meanwhile, on the surface, we meet Max, training with the Brotherhood of Steel, a formidable group committed to preserving and regulating advanced technology, believing humanity cannot be trusted with its power. Despite harassment from his peers and harsh discipline from instructors, Max remains inspired by his childhood encounter with a Brotherhood Knight. His journey takes a dramatic turn when his friend Dane and other cadets are sabotaged during their transition to Squires, wrongly implicating Max in a cruel plot, leading to his abrupt detainment for interrogation. Max vehemently denies any wrongdoing, asserting his unwavering loyalty to the Brotherhood and readiness to undertake any difficult task. Surprisingly, his passionate declaration earns him Dane's former role as a squire. Max's commitment is solidified during an initiation ceremony where a knight brands him with the Brotherhood's emblem, searing it into his flesh as a permanent scar. He then participates in a mission briefing, their objective is to track down a fugitive who has fled from the Enclave and aggressive successor to the U.S. Government. The team studies a photo of the target and his canine companion, learning that the fugitive absconded with a hazardous item that must be recovered to avoid disaster. Assigned to a knight, Max departs on an aircraft, eager to commence his mission. Meanwhile, a cadre of bounty hunters storms a fortress, eliminating the guard and making their way to a cemetery in search of a legendary bounty hunter who has been trapped for years, bizarrely buried alive, and periodically mutilated by the fortress leader. Discovering a peculiar grave adorned with bags and tubes, they deduce the prisoner is a ghoul, a mutated human. They unearth the coffin, placing a chicken near it to test the ghoul's sanity. To their astonishment, the ghoul is Cooper, who humorously interacts with the chicken. The hunters propose an alliance to capture the same man the Brotherhood seeks, revealing his intended destination in California, Cooper's former home. Reacting violently to references to his past, Cooper attacks, killing two hunters and incapacitating the third, whom he flings into the grave he once occupied. A flashback reveals Dr. Wilzig at the Enclave, where he is involved in a dog breeding program. Disapproving the cruel practice of incinerating underweight puppies, Wilzig falsifies records to save an undersized puppy, designating it CX-404. Over the years, he trains CX-404, who becomes a devoted companion aiding his covert experiments. Wilzig secretly implants a pulsating bluebead into his neck but is caught by a colleague threatening to expose him. In a desperate struggle, CX-404 defends Wilzig by attacking and killing the accuser. Following this, Wilzig and CX-404 flee, evading gunfire from an automated turret, becoming the very fugitives the Brotherhood now hunts. Back to Lucy, she roams the devastated landscape, coming upon a family that chose to end their lives with poison, a grim testament to their despair in the apocalypse. As night falls, she camps by a fire, only to be abruptly awakened by CX-404's growls. While the dog confronts a mutated roach, Lucy encounters Wilzig, standing ominously before her. Wilzig explains to Lucy the astonishing evolution of rat roaches, once ordinary cockroaches that have grown into more giant, predatory creatures in the radioactive aftermath. Despite Wilzig's stern advice to retreat to the safety of her vault due to the dangerous wastelands, Lucy staunchly refuses, determined not to leave without finding her father. Disheartened by her resolve, Wilzig cryptically remarks that her ambitions will shift as the harsh realities forge her into a creature of necessity, and departs with his companion, CX-404. At daybreak, the pair pauses beside discarded barrels of chemical waste. CX-404 ventures into a nearby cave and chillingly emerges with a human hand, signaling to Wilzig the lurking presence of a formidable beast. Elsewhere, Max attempts to forge a connection with Knight Titus, though his efforts are met with disregard. Impatient, Titus commands their pilot for an early drop-off, indifferent to their designated landing zone. Together, they parachute into the wild and soon stumble upon signs of Wilzig's recent visit near the ominous cave. Driven by curiosity, they venture inside, only to be ambushed by a monstrous mutated bear. Titus's weapon shatters under the beast's might, and his futile attempts to fight back lead him to a panicked retreat. The bear relentlessly pursues and overpowers Titus, rattling his armor as he pleads for rescue. Max intervenes heroically, neutralizing the threat with a precise gunshot. However, Max's respect dwindles as Titus lays blame and hurls insults, revealing the harsh penalties for failing squires. Disgusted by Titus's cowardice, he withholds medical aid, declaring the fallen knight unworthy. 
After Titus succumbs, Max tests the durability of the armor by demolishing some ruins, inadvertently stumbling upon a scuffle between a chicken collector and a salesman. Max intervenes, only to learn of the collector's justified anger over the salesman's misdeeds. Embarrassed, Max discovers that his suit is equipped with jet propulsion in the arms, a revelation that astonishes him. Meanwhile, after an exhaustive journey, Lucy arrives at the bustling Philly marketplace, seeking information about her father. Met with silence, her hope rekindles when she spots some vault tech in a store. Inside, she questions the clerk, June, who panics at the mention of Moldaver and swiftly expels Lucy. As she exits, Lucy encounters Wilzig, who recognizes her as a Vault 33 inhabitant and starts revealing his extensive knowledge of her home. Cooper appears before Lucy can delve deeper, defying Philly's prohibition against ghouls. The confrontation escalates when the clerk, tasked with Wilzig's transport, watches as Cooper shoots Wilzig, crippling him. Panic ensues, and as the clerk offers a bounty for Cooper's demise, a fierce gunfight erupts. The locals, eager for the reward, underestimate Cooper's ghoul resilience, allowing him to dispatch his assailants amidst the chaos quickly. Lucy capitalizes on the ensuing chaos to slip back into the shop, where she uncovers Moldaver's name and the clerk's log and arms herself with a gun she finds mounted on the wall. Meanwhile, outside, Cooper manages to overpower the clerk, but as he confronts Wilzig, he is ambushed by CX-404. In the scuffle, Cooper resorts to stabbing her. Just then, Lucy emerges and fires a tranquilizer dart at Cooper, which surprisingly has no effect. Cooper attempts to retaliate, but Max intervenes, shoving Lucy to safety. He urgently informs Lucy of Wilzig's importance, pleading with her to guard him while he engages Cooper. In the heat of the moment, Lucy and June hasten to pull Wilzig into the shop's safety. Max confronts Cooper, inadvertently wreaking havoc in the town as he clumsily navigates the armor's weaponry. Inside the shop, June performs a crude surgery on Wilzig, amputating more of his leg to fit a metallic prosthetic. She informs Lucy that their next move must be to deliver Wilzig to Moldaver. Motivated by the hope of finding her father, Lucy agrees to escort him. As Lucy and Wilzig escape, Cooper and Max's confrontation escalates in the streets. Max struggles with the armor's controls, leading Cooper to sever a critical cable, causing Max to float uncontrollably. Cooper then traps him with a rope, catapulting him into the air until he crash lands miles away. Later, as Cooper tends to CX-404's wounds and follows her in search of her master, Wilzig, weary from their journey, insists on rest. It is then that he reveals his intention to self-delete using poison. With his final breaths, he implores Lucy to take his head to Moldaver to alter the future. Reluctantly, Lucy proceeds with the gruesome task of decapitation. By the time Cooper and CX-404 arrive, they find only Wilzig's headless corpse. After medicating, Cooper and his dogs pick up Lucy's trail in the sand. Carrying Wilzig's head, Lucy presses on. During a brief rest, she notices electrical sparks when touching Wilzig's neck and inserts a tracker inside his nose just to be safe. Max, attempting to repair his suit, intercepts a radio message from the base. Impersonating Titus, he deceitfully reports Squire's death but panics when reinforcements are promised. In desperation, he destroys the radio and returns to the marketplace to acquire the necessary parts. Lacking funds, he reluctantly sells some teeth. Upon returning, Max finds the armor surrounded by raiders. Though outnumbered and initially overpowered, Max refuses to surrender. He fights back fiercely, managing to incapacitate several attackers. In the ensuing melee, he is thrust into the armor, accidentally crushing a raider's skull, which prompts the last of them to flee. At that pivotal moment, a Brotherhood aircraft soars overhead, dispatching Thaddeus, the new squire, to the ground. Max dons the armor and has no option but to assume Titus's identity. Thaddeus, deceived, joins forces with him. Given their past, where Thaddeus had tormented Max, Max seizes this chance for subtle revenge, tasking Thaddeus with menial chores like fetching apples from trees. Their journey leads them to discover Wilzig's lifeless body, and they soon pick up Lucy's trail. As they trek, Thaddeus confesses to Max that he had been the target of bullying before Max's arrival, which redirected the torment towards him, expressing regret for his actions. Meanwhile, back in Vault 33, the Council deliberates on suitable punishments. 
Chet is stripped of his gatekeeper duties, while Norman is relegated to demeaning tasks such as delivering food to the imprisoned raiders. A controversial decision emerges from the council, opting to rehabilitate the raiders into vault citizens despite Norman's vehement objections, labeling them as murderers deserving execution. His words are met with repulsion, but the tension escalates when a technician reports a critical shortage of water, barely enough for the vault's inhabitants, let alone the raiders. In a problematic turn of events, Lucy reaches a flood-ravaged city. An attempt to bond with a deer takes a terrifying twist as a monstrous creature emerges from the water, snatching the deer and vanishing. When the beast reappears and attacks, dragging Lucy into the depths, she manages to shoot it. The creature retreats, but not without claiming the deer's head. As Lucy prepares to dive back into the water with a tracker, Cooper suddenly intervenes, hitting her. Misunderstanding her intentions, he binds and uses her as bait in the water. The monster takes the bait, allowing Cooper to pull Lucy to safety, but not before the creature attacks, nearly dragging her back. In the chaos, Lucy fights back with her bag, and her robotic companion, CX-404, intervenes, driving the monster away. Defeated, Cooper decides to leave, taking Lucy with him. Max and Thaddeus soon encounter the same beast, sparking a desperate confrontation. Max's gunfire barely phases the creature, but Thaddeus' distant shot draws its attention. In a harrowing tug-of-war, Thaddeus' strategic kicking triggers the monster to expel its contents violently, including Wilzig's head, while CX-404 looks concerned. After a grueling journey, Lucy and Cooper discover a ghoul in agony at an old clinic. With no medicine left, Cooper ends his suffering and begins a grim task, which Lucy is forced to assist with. Their journey continues to a contaminated water source where Cooper's sudden coughing fit allows Lucy a moment to escape, though she nearly plummets into a chasm. In a frantic struggle, Cooper retrieves her with a rope, leading to a painful exchange where injuries are sustained on both sides. Their tumultuous path leads them to the Super Duper Mart, where Cooper, driven by desperation, trades Lucy for essential medicine before collapsing. Inside the harrowing confines of the facility, Lucy is discovered by a robotic surgeon poised to harvest her organs. Just as it tranquilizes her, it provides a synthetic finger as a temporary replacement. Regaining consciousness on a stretcher, Lucy's sharp eyes catch sight of mutating women imprisoned in cages guarded by a pair of ruthless bandits. As the robot menacingly brandishes a saw for the operation, Lucy's survival instincts kick in, she kicks the robot and leaps from the stretcher. In a daring move, she seizes a defibrillator and uses it to trap and electrify the saw, effectively dismantling the robot. Armed now, she coerces the terrified bandits into releasing the captive women by threatening them with the robot's now poisonous syringes. As the cages open, the women flee, except for one who has transformed into a ghoul. Unexpectedly, more cages release a horde of fierce ghouls that descend upon the bandits in a deadly melee. When the last transformed woman lunges at Lucy, she is forced to defend herself lethally. Exiting the turmoil, Lucy encounters Cooper, sharing a poignant moment where she declares her determination never to emulate him, leaving him with some medicine. After she departs, a reflective Cooper discovers additional supplies and a relic from his past, a film from his acting days, which he watches, lost in memories. Meanwhile, in Vault 33, Norman provides food to prisoners who hint at sinister secrets the Vault's leadership holds, stirring his curiosity. He denied access to Vault 32's records and enlisted Chad to investigate further. They uncover that the last signs of life detected in Vault 32 date back two years, aligning with the external decay. It appears the residents turned on each other, not slain by raiders as suspected, evidenced by the ominous message scrawled in blood, we know the truth, and death to management found next to the bound corpse of the overseer. Shockingly, Norman discovers that the raiders accessed the vault using his mother's Pip-Boy. Elsewhere, at an abandoned train station, Max takes a moment to brand Thaddeus as his squire officially but faces rejection when revealing his true identity. Fearing repercussions from the Brotherhood, Thaddeus disables Max's armor by removing its fusion core and departs with critical items, leaving Max immobilized. The following day, as Rad Roaches swarm Max's immobile suit, Lucy arrives just in time, gunning down the creatures. Despite her mistrust, Lucy hesitates to assist Max, who, realizing his dire state, reveals his real name, Titus, and persuades her to help him in exchange for life-saving medicine. 
Once freed, they forge a precarious alliance, aiming to use Lucy's tracker in a deal that promises mutual benefits. As they journey towards Shady Sands, Lucy opts for a peaceful approach when encountering travelers. However, the situation escalates into violence when the travelers attack, forcing Max to defend them, resulting in his injury. He reveals the brutal reality that the attackers were cannibals. Their journey brings them to Shady Sands, where the population vastly exceeds Lucy's expectations, shattering her belief in the vault's purpose. Overwhelmed, Lucy is confronted by the harsh truths of the post-war world as Max shows her the remnants of a devastated city where he once survived by sheer luck. Their exploration leads them into old labs, where a sudden trap separates them, leaving their fates uncertain as gas fills the room. Meanwhile, in Vault 32, Norman and his ally Ched delve deeper into the mystery, uncovering that the inhabitants had desperately tried to access Vault 31. Amidst these revelations, the residents of Vault 33 cast their votes for a new overseer, and Betty secured the position with overwhelming support. Norman, ever the skeptic, scrutinizes the election records and discovers a startling pattern, all previously elected overseers, including Betty, originated from Vault 31, a trend consistent in Vault 32. Betty announces a newfound alliance with Vault 31 the following day, promising to send aid to rebuild Vault 32. As the citizens of Vault 33 explore their neighboring vault, Norman notes a chilling absence of corpses or blood, sparking further suspicion. He confronts Betty about the whereabouts of his mother's Pip-Boy, only to be told it was buried with her. A vivid flashback transports us to Cooper's past, where he once served as the charismatic spokesperson for Vault-Tec during his acting days. He's seen promoting Vault 4 as a haven from communist threats, destined to house 80 scientists for a crucial five-year experiment. After hours, Cooper's wife, Barb, hosts a gathering where disillusioned Hollywood stars lament the end of their industry, resigned to advertising as their new reality. Barb, deeply involved with vault Tech and equipped with a Pip-Boy, seems content, but Cooper harbors growing concerns about their freedom within the stringent vault regulations, sparking frequent disputes with Barb. In a dramatic turn, Cooper is apprehended by three sheriffs who deliver him to their leader, even returning a severed finger, which Cooper stoically reattaches. Recognizing the leader from his past, Cooper takes advantage of a relaxed moment to overpower and eliminate the sheriffs. He then confronts the boss about a wanted poster, recognizing the depicted individual, Moldaver, from a secretive Hollywood Forever meeting he once attended, where she had introduced herself as his ardent admirer. In the present, Lucy and Max recover from their ordeal in a medical ward within Vault 4, where they are cautioned to remain until radiation risks are cleared. In a light-hearted moment, Lucy flirtatiously probes Max's readiness for intimacy, but he admits his inexperience and declines, bound by his knightly honor. Shortly thereafter, they are permitted to join others in the mess hall, where Max likens the vaults to a cult. Their interaction with Overseer Ben, who startlingly has only one central eye, deepens the mystery as he outlines the rules, including a prohibition against venturing to level 12. Lucy's curiosity improves, leading to a rejection from Ben's office after inquiring too closely about the mysterious level. Meanwhile, Max tends to his salvaged armor, pondering their surreal surroundings. Max covertly infiltrates the power room to steal a fusion core to repair his armor. However, Bertie catches him red-handed. Instead of punishing him, she equips him with a Pip-Boy and assigns him to Unit 428, where he's provided with his apartment. Max relishes the newfound comforts of life, such as television, music, sumptuous food, and clean water. Meanwhile, Lucy's curiosity leads her to a deserted classroom where she discovers a model of Shady Sands and a timeline detailing the vault's takeover by the New Californian Republic, confirmed by the presence of their flag. Bertie soon summons the community to engage in a ritualistic surface-dweller tradition. In a bizarre ceremony, everyone strips off their Pip-Boys and clothes to worship the Flame Mother. They engaged in chants and smeared themselves with the ashes of the deceased, consuming blood and venerating an image of Moldaver, revered as the Flame Mother. Unsettled by the proceedings, Lucy searches for Max, who is thoroughly enjoying the decadent lifestyle and uninterested in her concerns. Frustrated, Lucy heads to level 12, seeking concrete evidence. Unaware of a lurking monster, she stumbles upon a laboratory showcasing horrific human experiments. A tape reveals a gruesome scene of a woman in a tank giving birth to monstrous creatures that consume her. As Lucy further investigates, she finds numerous pregnant women contained in capsules. 
Her presence nearly goes unnoticed until a scientist arrives for an inspection and almost detects her, forcing Lucy to throw a bottle at his face defensively. This commotion brings Bertie and her guards on the scene, leading to a fierce skirmish where Lucy can incapacitate several before being overpowered and captured. Elsewhere, on a beach, two wanderers employing metal detectors stumble upon various items buried in the sand. Returning home, they are confronted by Cooper in their kitchen, demanding information. One reveals that his brother joined Moldaver's crew and vanished, while the other is drawn to Moldaver's promises of a better world. When the discussion escalates, Cooper is forced to defend himself, resulting in the young man's death. A revealing flashback shows Cooper's disdain for Moldaver's rhetoric during a meeting where she denounces the American dream and implicates vault in corruption, later pulling Cooper aside to disclose her knowledge of his connections and revealing vault exploitation of her groundbreaking discoveries. Moldaver entrusts Cooper with a microphone to eavesdrop on Barb, thrusting him into a moral quandary. Torn, Cooper initially disposes of the device, but driven by a relentless pursuit of truth ignited by another vault advertisement, he retrieves it, determined to uncover the reality hidden beneath the surface. In Vault 4, Lucy is shackled to a table by Ben and Bertie, who compel her to watch a haunting video. Years earlier, a grotesque creature rampaged through the vault, slaughtering scientists in a horrific spree. Confused, Lucy listens as they reveal a chilling past, the scientists had once embarked on radical experiments, splicing human DNA with radiation-resistant species to forge beings that could endure the toxic world above. But their ambitions turned disastrous, birthing monstrous beings that annihilated their creators. The creature in the footage was once human, and the current inhabitants of Vault 4 are the troubled survivors of these vile experiments. Lucy expresses remorse for her initial misunderstanding. When questioned about similar experiments in Vault 33, her denial results in immediate arrest. As she's being led away, Max, spurred into action by the sight of her distress, abandons his idle ways to steal a power core. Meanwhile, Lucy faces a grim fate as she's bound before a crowd, prepped for execution, a merciless exile to the rugged surface. But as her doom seems imminent, the lights abruptly cut out. Max, now armored, bursts into the scene, sending the crowd into chaos. Amidst his destructive rampage, Lucy calms him, and together, they escape to the surface. Outside, Lucy insists Max shed the armor so they can return the power core, which is vital for the vault's survival. As they share a moment of vulnerability, Max reveals his true identity and confesses his past actions to Titus. Despite the harsh realities of the wasteland they've faced, Lucy understands the necessity of his deeds, and they resolve to continue their quest together. Elsewhere, Thaddeus, nursing a monstrous wound at a gas station, imprisons CX-404 in a cola box to halt her relentless pursuit. Soon after, a helpful stranger claiming to be a doctor treats his wound with a potent medicine that miraculously begins to heal him instantly. At the same gas station, Cooper arrives, hears CX 404's cries, and liberates her, following her in pursuit of their elusive goal. Meanwhile, Thaddeus, transformed by the medicine into a ghoul, encounters Lucy and Max at a radio tower. A tense confrontation unfolds, ending with Thaddeus trapped and wounded by an accidental trap. Just as the Brotherhood aircraft looms overhead, a desperate deal is struck. Max cunningly swaps a random head for Wilzig's, securing Thaddeus's escape and kissing Lucy, and trusting her with the head to find her father. Back in Vault 33, the raiders meet a sudden demise as Rat Poison claims their lives, orchestrated by the enigmatic Betty. Amidst the chaos, Chet learns he will relocate to Vault 32 with his girlfriend and her baby while Norman remains in Vault 33. Betty orchestrates a grand ceremony for the new dwellers, manipulating the proceedings under the watchful eyes of the guards. As the vault stirs with activity, Norman seizes the chance to sneak into Betty's office, using her computer to send a deceptive message to Vault 31, declaring the mission compromised and calling for immediate extraction. As Norman steps into Vault 31, he's greeted with a sight that leaves him utterly stunned. Meanwhile, at the base, Max is escorted to confront the leader. Presenting a severed head as evidence, the leader instantly discerns it's a counterfeit. Max is branded a traitor for his actions against Dane and Titus. Just as the knights prepare to execute him, Max divulges a crucial piece of information about the actual location of the head and pleads for mercy on behalf of Dane, who confesses their treachery was due to fear of their daunting mission. 
The leader, persuaded by Max's audacity and revelations, declares that Titus is a coward deserving of his fate and enlists Max to aid in consolidating his power. Simultaneously, Lucy arrives at Moldaver's stronghold, a peculiar place where humans and ghouls coexist. There, she finds Hank imprisoned in a cage while Moldaver dines with a ghoul. Lucy presents the head to Moldaver, who extracts a small sphere from its neck. Before releasing Hank, Moldaver insists on unveiling a truth to Lucy that Hank never originated from the vault. Concurrently, Norman uncovers that Vault 31's overseer is merely a brain interfaced with a computer. It scans Norman, detects Hank's DNA, and attempts to tranquilize him, but Norman evades it deftly. Exploring further, Norman is stunned to discover Bud's Bud's test tube babies engineered to sustain humanity under stringent governance. A flashback reveals Cooper clandestinely observing Barb at her workplace, uncovering a conspiracy by the corporation to orchestrate an apocalypse to evade global conflict. Barb suggests utilizing 100 volts across America for varied scientific experiments to determine the optimal survival strategy for humanity. In the present, the brain overseer divulges to Norman the grand scheme, Vault 31 serves as a cryogenic sanctuary for elite executives. Vaults 32 and 33 function as breeding grounds to create a superior class of leaders who will inherit a cleansed earth. This revelation confirms that the government intentionally initiated the nuclear holocaust to secure monopolistic control over the future. In a twist, Moldaver relates to Lucy how Hank, once an aide to Barb, deceived his wife, Rose, about the viability of surface survival. Astute and suspicious, Rose left the vault upon discovering the truth and took Lucy and Norman with her. Hank, in a desperate attempt to retrieve his children, raised shady sands and forcibly returned them to the vault. This recount makes Lucy reinterpret her childhood memories. Amidst these revelations, Moldaver reveals that Wilsig's invention is a groundbreaking cold fusion technology promising limitless energy. As Hank desperately tries to sway Lucy to his perspective, Moldaver shocks everyone by revealing that the ghoul dining with her is none other than Rose. Lucy's heartbreak solidifies when she glimpses her mother's necklace in the hands of her captors. Overwhelmed yet determined, she coerces Hank into providing Moldaver with the crucial code needed to activate a pivotal system computer within the vault. Meanwhile, Lucy's brother Norman finds himself involuntarily confined within Vault 31 as its doors seal shut. Facing a dire situation with no apparent escape, Norman opts for temporary safety by entering cryogenic sleep in one of the preservation chambers. Moldaver successfully harnesses Wilsig's advanced cold fusion technology at the vault to power the computer. Still, their progress is violently interrupted by the arrival of the Brotherhood, descending from the skies in their formidable aircraft. A brutal clash erupts between the two factions, unleashing chaos and destruction. Amidst the turmoil, Max desperately shields Dane while the Brotherhood soldiers, encased in imposing armor, ruthlessly dispatch their adversaries. Amid the carnage, Hank seizes the moment to indoctrinate Lucy with his bleak worldview, claiming that the relentless violence proves his belief in humanity's need for purification. Distraught and mourning, Lucy rebuffs Hank's manipulation, refusing to release him. The armored knights of the Brotherhood press forward, relentlessly advancing as they eliminate resistance. Just then, a shadowy figure emerges, Cooper, who astutely exploits a known vulnerability in the Brotherhood's chest armor dispatching one knight with deadly precision. Another knight retaliates but accidentally compromises the vault's power grid, plunging the area into darkness. Skilled in navigating the pitch black, Cooper methodically takes down the disoriented knights. While the knights grapple with Cooper's unexpected assault, Max seizes the opportunity to rescue Lucy. He swiftly releases Hank, only for Lucy to reveal Hank's role in destroying Max's home. As they confront the truth, Hank dons a knight's armor and attempts to abduct Lucy. Max intervenes, but Hank overpowers him. In a tumultuous confrontation, Lucy, armed and resolute, aims a gun at Hank but finds herself unable to pull the trigger. In the nick of time, Cooper intervenes, shooting Hank in the cheek to fend him off. Cooper, desperate for answers about his family, confronts Hank, but Hank escapes using the armored suit. As more Brotherhood aircraft looms overhead, Cooper convinces Lucy to join forces to unravel the conspiracy and pursue Hank. Lucy makes a sorrowful decision to end Rose's suffering with a gunshot before departing with Cooper. They set out towards the devastated remains of Hollywood while Hank makes his way to New Vegas. 
Moments later, as Max regains consciousness, he witnesses Moldaver activating the cold fusion, illuminating a nearby city. Tragically, Moldaver succumbs to her injuries and dies. The arriving soldiers mistakenly herald Max as a hero, a title he accepts reluctantly, burdened by the harsh realities he now understands.